Hello, it's Russ Curtis, Professor of Counseling. Thanks for joining me. It's been a while. It's been a busy April, but I appreciate you joining me. And as I'm wrapping up my theories class, I've been teaching it for 24 years now. I like to talk about the essence of the theories and particularly how it's applied because it's easy to get wrapped up into details in the textbook or get consumed with who the contributors are and lose sight of, well, what are we talking about in terms of actually application? So the essence of existential therapy is the power of relationships. Now, this is my interpretation. However, um, argue with me. Let, me. let me get your comments on it. The power of relationships for healing. And the belief here, and if you read Yalom or other of the existential th uh, therapists, not necessarily the philosophers, but the therapists, is that if I can engage with a client in a professional relationship where we can, can uh, build this relationship based on authenticity, then you are going to learn how to do that and take it outside of session and use that with your partners, with your boss, with your kids, with your friends, and so forth. And as relationships improve, we may experience less of kind of the mental health issues. Now, the existential therapist would say, hey, there's no meaning in life except for what you're making of it. But when we are in good standing with relationships, we have better resources. We have better uh, people to reach out to for coping. And so then we can ask ourselves, well, what are the other theories that espouse the same power of the relationship? Feminist therapy, very clearly. Uh, and maybe I'll post a video about that as well. Relational cultural, clearly. Uh, reality therapy, and that one may, may fool some folks, but reality therapy is, uh, it's often misunderstood, but it is the power of the relationship that heals. And that when relationships improve, symptoms are reduced. Person-centered, clearly, the humanist ther therapies are talking about the power of the relationship. Now, existential therapy and person-centered, uh, and even arguably gestalt, all fit within a humanist framework. And so that kind of makes sense. And I know that I'm leaving out other theories. I do want to state now that even with cognitive behavioral therapy, they stress the importance of the um, connection and the collaboration between counselor and client. And behaviorists in particular now are talking about how the quality of the counselor-client relationship is a positive reinforcer. So again, if you're getting stuck on, well, how do I actually do existential therapy? It is a very much about building a relationship. And you can be talking about Netflix. You could be talking about whatever, but we're going to be authentic with each other, clearly professional, with the understanding that once we realize, hey, this is an authentic, real relationship, and now I know what that is like, and I can take that out into the world and therefore have better coping sources and just better relationships, according to some of these series, are healing. Okay, let me know your thoughts on this, and um, I hope to get some more out as the semester wraps up, but take good care.